Let me finish chewing. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good good day. How's everybody doing out there? So we I'm got good in Colorado. Yeah, it's actually a little windy, but sunny. We got some. We got a hello from Chile, Nigeria, two Nigerias, Newfoundland. I wonder if the two people in Nigeria know each other. How big's Nigeria? Probably, probably a little bigger than that. Uh, Hayatu <laughs> and Samuel, you guys know each other? Are you are you calling in from? I guess it's a whole country. Probably not. <laughs> France, Algeria, Wait, there's Sweden. There's the Halifax, UK. Halifax. I didn't realize. I thought. Or is that not Halifax? That's Haliax. I don't know. Uh -oh. Flooding. Jeez. Well, well, that sucks. <laughs> I forget that other people have weather. We just have mostly sun. Yeah. Sprinkle a little snow every once in a while and just keep it sunny and warm. Oh, There's no people outside of Colorado aren't supposed to know that because then they'll come here. Yeah. DL. DL. Speaking of American weather, though, I saw something this morning that said that they're supposed to get, I don't know, this sounds absurd, two years worth of rain in Southern California in the next week or something like that wow two years worth of rain was that like, mean they have to I save it up it. Are they, are, i didn't it, yeah i didn't know we ordered in bulk like that that's what happens when you order your weather from costco <laughs> yeah. samuel's Costco's an american bulk uh, right. yeah things purchasing store here in the u.s where you get every, you can get everything as long as you're okay to get it in mass quantities <laughs> All right, and he was shooting for Halifax. It was, it was mis mis misspelling. Okay, ha good. Haliax does sound like a cool place, though, but it, it does sound like off world. Yeah. Speaking of, I did watch the the new Expanse last night. Oh, I have not seen it yet. Okay. You're on the ball. Except... Just watch it right away, huh? Yeah. Well, I wasn't I wasn't planning on it, but then I realized I didn't have anything else I really was needing to get caught up on. Oh. All right. Well, that's, I'm sure Presumably they'd appreciate I'm... hearing that, that uh, you watched it because there's nothing else to do, but... <laughs> <laughs> nothing else to do. I might as well watch your show. High praise. Yeah. All right. Let's get rolling. Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, if we have not met, I am Aaron Dietzen, and uh, I get to show SketchUp. This is, this is what I do. And uh, if we have met before, welcome back. So with me, as always is my good buddy Jody Gates. Hey, that's me. Who you can hear but not see. He's like, he's an enigma. He's a, he's something special. I, so I have been called that <laughs> many times. It sounds polite when you, that's the way you said it though. Oh, okay. I tried to make it nice as it was coming out of my mouth and sounded like it might not be. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Welcome, guys. Welcome to SketchUp Live. This is where we take a couple of hours every week and we use SketchUp Live. No filters, no edits. We just get in there and use it. We like to get your input, your, your uh, feedback live as we're using the software. And uh, we try to make this uh, enjoyable yet educational. Edutainment is the term that we're shooting for right here. Well, I like that. It's good. I didn't coin that, but uh, I, I'm trying to use it enough to get the rights to it by just the amount I use that term. Um, so today, well, this is gonna be a kind of a fun day. Today, what we have planned is taking most recently released live components. So the, the live component team reached out to us and said, uh, you know, we'd like to release live components on a regular basis. Uh, this doesn't mean authoring is not coming. Authoring is still coming. I've been reassured that that's, that's happening. It's in testing. It will show up. And when it happens, we will dive in and we will do some authoring together. Um, for now, though, we're going to get 10 live components at least every month. And what we want to do here on this show is explore those live components, but also challenge ourselves to make something cool, including all 10 of those live components. So... I was Do trying we know to think. How many there are in existence yet? How many total? Or mm -hmm. I I know there's at least these new ten. I forget there's like sixty three of them beforehand, seventy three something like that. I don't know. I don't know the total number, okay. but there's quite a few now. More than ten. Yes. 
So here's so so we're gonna dive into this. We're gonna take a look at the live components, and then we're gonna I'm gonna put together a model or challenge myself <laughs> by putting together a model. But here's what I want to do. This is this is the ground rules that I think I want to try to follow. Um, I do have to use every one of the 10 in a single model to kind of bring them together cohesively. Uh, I can edit them however I need to. So use the live component editing or even, you know, maybe do some, some manual editing once they're in the model. Um, I can use other components. I can use raw geometry, but I have to use the components in roughly the reason they were made. So I can't, for example, uh, bring in a toilet bowl and shrink it down to doll size and say it's a toy. That's a cop-out. So I'm going to try to use them all uh, like they were supposed to be used. So um, I, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. This is an experiment. I think it's going to be fun because these components really are cool. I'm really liking the way these are, these are showing up. Um, I like the live component editor. So we're going to hop in and take a look right now at what we got for the first set this first January 2021 our first 10 live components of the year so do you want to you want to talk about how you feel about these versus uh similar dynamic components are we gonna are we gonna say DCs in this in this little uh <laughs> hey a pair, I, I mean DCs aren't going anywhere right they still exist they're still good they, they didn't become bad or stop working just because we released live components um I still like dynamic components I can author a dynamic component. So right now, that's 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 a good thing it's got going for it. Um, can you make a live component of a dynamic component? One could. And so, some of them. Okay. Some of them you could do that with. Okay. Some of them, okay. right. maybe not so much. Uh, yeah, we're actually looking at that. That's, that's a good question. That, that is a good question, Jody. So as we go through here, there are some of these that we probably could, or I've seen dynamic components of similar things. So. That, that is possible, but there's some of them in here where we have this parametric uh, geometries getting created that I don't know how you would do it in a, in a dynamic component. So I'll, I'll try to call that out when it happens. Um, all right, so here's what I'm looking at right now. I just pulled up the 3D warehouse from inside SketchUp. So this is the, the, uh, the list. When you first get to 3D warehouse, let's see if I can go back home again. Uh, this is what the main screen looks like. Up at the top, we have our curated components, and there are a lot of live components in there. Uh, what I just did is I just clicked on the SketchUp Labs name. Oh, no, I don't want to do that because that actually opens it in a different <coughs> window. I want to click into one of these components, so I'll pull up the, the collection, and then I can go to SketchUp Labs. And that will pull up the SketchUp Labs author and everything that's been released from SketchUp Labs. If you go to Models then, it will give you a list of all the dynamic components that aren't products. So there's a handful that are specifically products for specific manufacturers. These are the, the ones that, uh, these are all of them. And you can see they're in, by default, I got them right here in date added. So the most recent ones are at the top. Um, so if I scroll down a little bit, these two, the Christmas present and the Christmas tree, I know were released right around uh, the holidays. So it's actually, these are the 10 that we want to look at. The feature wall up through the Kohler hydro rail. Um, so those are, the, those are the 10 we want to put into a single model. So generally speaking, I try to be very transparent with you guys. I try to, anything I try to model, we just, we jump into together and I usually start from it. I'll get a picture or do a little, little uh, you know, uh, investigative work beforehand. Um, that's about it though. I try not to actually develop anything before because that's the process, the design process what we want to see. Uh, the one thing I did do this time is I went and I downloaded all 10 of these and saved them into my model beforehand. Uh, I just figured it'd be a poor way to use our time together to watch files download to my computer. So, and it was, it was about 10, 12 minutes of downloading to get them all downloaded and into my model. So if I come out here, if I look at my, this is my model, uh, and you will notice, we'll just cover it right now up front. 3D Mouse is working again. About 45 yeah. minutes after the last live stream, I did manage to get it back running. So that's a plus. That's nice. Um, that sounds good. Yeah, it was, oh, it was something. 
Uh, maybe we can vent later. I'm happy right now. I'm, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> All right. So that's right. Uh, yeah, and it's working. So I'm not going to not going to poke that bear. All right. So uh, I'm just pulling up my components window right now, and you can see in my components in model I have those ten components plus Sumele. So these are the ten I want to use. Like I said, uh, if we want to, we could actually we could drag them all out here one at a time and just have them sitting off to the side. That's that's cool. I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, so we have, let's see, here's my wall-mounted cabinet, uh, a vanity vessel, a vanity counter sunk. So we're going to be doing a bathroom of some sort, a triangular facade. That's not going to fit that's in the bathroom. <laughs> no. A tessellated pod. We've got a pendant light. The Kohler hydro rail. So that's I'm going to put that over here. That's going to go with our our bathroom collection. Here, let's let's do this. I'm going to. I mean, I feel like that really deserves an award for the name. I know. I, it made me think of like monorail or. Yeah, a ride in an amusement park. Yeah, I, I was I was kind of surprised to find out it was a shower head. I mean, a fancy shower head, but a shower head nonetheless. Oh, sure. All right. Um, a feature wall. Exterior sliding door. And then a kitchen cabinet. So I, I'm seeing... So here's what I got going on right now in my brain. I got three pieces that I'm definitely feeling are uh, like things that would go in a kitchen. I have this... Scoop this up a little bit. There we go. There's my grouping. So here's bathrooms. I have two uh, vanities. I have over here upper and lower kitchen cabinets and some pendant lighting that could go into a kitchen. Then over here, I have what I'll call some structure pieces. So the question now is to how, <laughs> how to take these three groups of things and come up with a cohesive idea. So Here's what I'm thinking. Um, I think what I want to do. I'm gonna play a little. I'm gonna play a little sci-fi with your. Jody just commented on the Expanse, and I have been loving it too. And I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna divert off. We're not gonna talk about the Expanse the whole time. Well, we can. I, I got to kick something off, and then we can go back to talking about the Expanse. But uh, I'm kind of feeling like this. This idea of making like like a deployable unit, like a thing that can get put out somewhere that's like a kitchen or a bathroom. So I, here, here's what I think I'm gonna do. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, so I'm gonna use this, this wall to create like a shell of a mobile structure that will be set up inside as a full kitchen. And then maybe we'll use this tessellated pod as sort of a deployable bathroom setup, and we'll see how that works. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's a thing. It's something that could happen somewhere, somehow, maybe. I don't know. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna see how I'm gonna see how we can make that work. Uh, so I'm gonna start with the tessellated wall. Is it tessellated wall or is it the tri triangular facade? Excuse me. So I'm gonna grab my pot, triangular facade. My mistake. Two T words. All right. So I'm gonna bring this over here and just work with this piece for a second. So any of these live components can be configured through warehouse. When you pull up a LC or anything that you find in the warehouse, that little lightning bolt down the lower right corner of the thumbnail, you can actually uh, go in right there in the warehouse and manipulate it and set it up. Uh, if you download it and you put it into a model, you can actually do all that same manipulation right here inside of SketchUp Pro 2021. Um, I don't know that you can do it in previous versions. In fact, I'm pretty sure you can't. Uh, so here's, here's so this being 21, um, I can right click on this and I have the normal right click options uh, as well as like options for components, but I have this right here, which is configure live component. When I click on that, this will take just a second because it has to connect with the server to get the controls for this. But when I do that, I get 
here's all my options for my triangular facade. So I can see here I have some basic options. Uh, and this is, this is one of the parts I was talking about is different from a dynamic component. A dynamic component can do a lot of stuff. You can have multiple sets of geometry that turn visible or invisible based on toggling. You can deform geometry, stretch it, rotate it. Uh, even a little bit of uh, creation or math can go into that. Uh, what, it, what it doesn't have the ability to do inside there is uh, generate parametrically driven geometry. I think those words were true in how they came out of my mouth. Um, so that's one of the cool things about uh, dynamic component or, or the, the live components is we actually have a, a parametric engine in there that lets this geometry get created. So I can create stuff and have it regenerate different shapes. So in here, if I go and look at these different options, so I have, I don't know what all these do. Right now it's set to crisscross, so we're gonna try slanted just to see what that looks like. Okay, that's a little too uniform for me. Zigzag, nope, don't care for it. And then random, that's too far the other direction. Okay, so out of those, I actually like crisscross the best, I think. I like the, no, maybe not. Actually, maybe, I, I think I like random. That's kind of cool. I like the look on that. I think I like random. All right, we're going, we're going with random. Uh, and as you guys will be getting this 10 seconds after we've done it due to the you know streaming lag, I guess we just, <laughs> we, did, we didn't even ask. I'll ask you, next time. You better like random. <laughs> so if you guys can just give us a thumbs up on random, we'd feel better about ourselves. All right, so I have some more options here. Let's see, module spacing. Oh, that's actually the uh, the size of the the panel. The vertical model, I'm assuming, is going to make them taller. Okay. Uh, these are so somebody already called this out when we first released them. The UI here is in millimeters. Uh, it doesn't mean the geometry that's created is in millimeters. The geometry that actually gets dumped into my model is going to be whatever geometry units I have set up. So my uh, template I have right now is Imperial. So when this comes in, I'll be able to work with it in Imperial. Uh, it's just the UI over here for right now is in millimeters. All right, then I have number of modules. So I can change that triangle size and go bigger or smaller triangles. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. All right, I don't want too dense. I like, yeah, something like that okay and then frame width let's see what that is oh that's actually the thickness of the material between the panels the frames makes sense and then frame depth i'm assuming is going to be this direction yeah all right so i'm going to make that kind of big because this is going to be like a structural wall looking thing and then the maximum lateral variation <laughs> oh okay that's 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 how pokey outy it is if I wanted to get less technical sounding. Wow. See that? See how it sticks out there further? Yeah, we can change that. yeah. So I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle on that. I think something, you know, I want I want some variance. I want some I want it to look cool. And then here's this is some of the parametric stuff I was talking about. Anytime you see this term variation seed, means there's a number in there that they put in to generate this parametric geometry. Um, so right now everything's done by a slider, so it's kind of a preset geometry, uh, but it recalcs how those the undulations in the triangles happen based on the number that you put in here. So you can see I have a hundred different variations I could make with this one uh, one option here. So that's pretty cool. I don't know, and I just I'll just pick one. You know what? I'm a big fan. I'm gonna use the number. Let's see how it looks. I've always liked the number 27. I'm going with that. Get some, get some more lateral variation. There we go. Um, and then let's see what do we have here. Building mount options. I'm actually going to make these into standalone walls. So I'm going to turn my building mount off, I think. Cool. I, I need something. <laughs> I need a point of reference right now. I'm working off nothing. Let's say I want the uh, inside of this to be like, uh, I don't know, it's a good... 20 foot by 20 foot. So maybe that's my floor. Okay. Um, so if I was to grab this right now. Let's 
Okay, so what, what do I have this set to? What, how many, however many millimeters I have, that's pretty close to 20 feet. Um, I don't think it needs to be as tall, so I'm going to slide vertical modules down to one. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take this one, I'm going to grab it, make a copy of it, I'm going to stick it right here. Whoop, whoop, whoopsie. First mistake I've ever made on a live stream. How about that? That has to be embarrassing. You guys were here to witness it. So how long do these stay parametric? At some point, do you have to sort of bake them? Um, so they will stay. I can come in and edit any of these any point I want until I explode them. So with these three, so I copied them. What I could do is I could grab this one right here and I could go change the variation seed. Oh no, they all change. Okay. Oh, second mistake ever. Okay, if I click this one and I say make unique, and then I say configure live component, let's see if I can change it then. It's just kind of amazing that there's two mistakes, your first two mistakes in the same session. You guys are lucky. We should save the, oh no, we should not save this one. We don't want anyone to know. That's right. So yeah, see this, now this one's moving on its own, separate from, from this one, the other two. That's cool. All right, so I'm thinking, here's, here's what I'm thinking. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? Let's, let's put one on as a roof too. Let's, I'm gonna grab this one, grab it, option, copy it right here. I'm gonna rotate it. 90 degrees and I'm going to uh, make it unique again bring up the configuration and we'll make it the full height um, so I'm gonna double two vertical modules and then it's 32 so this would have to be That's close to fitting, a little bit off. But what I can do, can I scale this? Let's see what happens if I, so it won't let me scale a, dyna, or a, a, a component or a live component. But I wanna play with that a little bit. I'm gonna save this and I wanna see what happens when I, I poke at this a little bit. <laughs> so I wanna pull it back this way just a touch. It won't let me, if I, if I have a live component selected and I hit scale, it tells me no. So you get the anti symbol there. So I'm wondering if I put this inside of a group, if I was just to grab this, I need to grab something else with it. So I'm gonna grab, draw a line right here on top of it. I'm gonna grab the line and component, group that and then I'll scale it back. There we go. So that worked. Oh, but you know what's not right is this is not right. So I'm gonna move this over to here. That's what I was off. Okay, maybe I don't wanna, let me ungroup that. Whoop, nope, I did. I, I undoed too much. Redo it. Redo it. Redo it. All right, so I want this one to actually be like right here. It's close to lining up, still a little bit off. Um, so yeah, so that's still, that's still, that process is still valid. So if I take this, I can't rescale a component, but if I put a group, I can grab that group. You can't group a single thing by itself. You have to have more than one thing to create a group. Um, so that's why I'm putting a line on here. So I draw this line and grab the component, group it together, and then I can scale that group to make it bigger. So I'm deforming the outside of it like that. Okay, there we go. That's the shell of my kitchen. Um, I want to get 
this door into the outside. So I'm going to put it level with the bottom, rotate it 90 degrees, get it back here like this. All right, let me put it in the center. I'm going to build a wall around this uh, this this uh, member. So basically, I'm going to have this door is going to be the piece that I build the wall around. But let's check out the live component options for this slider before we go any further. I wonder how big I can make it. All right, so we have width. I can make it bigger. How big can I go? Let's see how just, just giant I can make this sliding glass door. All right, that's a healthy size door. That should work. Um, the other options here are flip left to right. I don't have a particular feeling about that. Uh, oh, and then slide it front to back. So which where's the slider going to be? Is it going to go inside or outside where I'm at? I already have it in the right spot. Uh, no transom. Ooh, so let's see what that looks like. Okay. Fixed pane transom. Sliding door transom. Oh, I got you. Double transom. Whoa. That's a little too crazy for me. I'm going to go back to no transom. That was just too much. I mean, and realistically, then, how many transoms do you need? Well, obviously, hopefully less than two because. All right. There we go. Cool. Um, I gotta be honest. I don't know that I, I. I was trying to think of what a transom was when I clicked on that. All right. So I'm gonna put a wall around this now. Uh, I'm gonna start oh, a rectangle right here. I'm gonna take that rectangle up. To, one of our, one of our regular viewers. That's true. Really. Okay. That looks good. I'm going to put a rectangle inside of that rectangle. I'm going to start right here at the intersection where this that, that door hits right here. I'm going to go from there to the top corner of that same piece. Like I do want to be on that red axis. I want to, I want to lock red. Is this crooked? Hold on, I'm going to go big. I'm going to go... Something's not straight. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I have no doubt this is... Uh... Okay, so now I'm going to come here. I'm just... All right, I'm not sure what was going on there. I was, I was a little bit off. I must have... The point I clicked must not have been the right point. I don't know. All right, I'm going to close this up around here. I'm going to pull this over till it hits the inside here. And that comes right flush up against the outside. That's where I want it. I feel like this one didn't hit in the right spot or something. Let's see. Let's pull this over. Nope, that's hitting perfect too. Right inside that. And then we'll drag this guy down. All right, so that puts, I, and it's a flat plane right now. I know I, I got to put some depth on it. So now I can take that and I'm going to pull that through to, uh, and I'm going to make that into a group. Okay, so there is my, my mobile uh, or my deployable kitchen thing. Hold on, let's, let's put a floor on here too, because those are nice to have in kitchens. And then we'll pull that down. Ten, sure, 10 inches, that sounds good. All right. All right, so there's my, my deployable kitchen piece. I'm going to go ahead and make that into just a group, uh, just so I can move it around. Or like in this case, I want to, I know this is not necessary, but I want to have it face forward towards my red axis because 
That seems like the way it should be. Um, cool. That looks good. I like that. Um, all right. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do this now. I, I like I want to play with this. This is the this is probably the one piece where I'm. I don't know. It's it's probably because it's bright and colorful, but I'm excited to play with this. Let's put some. Let's put this on a. Give ourselves a little bit of uh, you know. Flare around the outside. All right. So if I double click on this again, it's going to load my live uh, configure data configuration data, and I can play with this a little bit. Um, so obviously, the one I want to play with first, I want to get this so it fits into the wall section that I'm looking at, like that. Get the height. I'll pull that all the way up. Take that all the way. We'll go all the way up to the roof. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and I can change how many array pieces are in that. Oh, I skipped right over wall type. Let's check this out. Let's see, I have triangular. That's what's on now. I have point disturbance. Um, so, the question, question was asked. Sorry, I was busy mm -hmm. typing something else about why it takes so long for the configure window to open. Is it pulling it down from the cloud every time you do it it is yeah no. so right now how i understand it right now all that data is stored in the cloud it's not actually uh stored inside of sketchup at this point so it does have to go grab the configuration data and pull it in i believe <laughs> um i mean i don't love this this particular it's probably a place for it, but looks like blisters. Let's check Ripple. I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really appreciating it. Probably if you put like a kind of a red Marsy sort of Mars color to it, then it might look like a Maybe. planet. I like this. I'm, 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 I can get behind this a little bit. I like the, the. Uh, we need different colors, but I kind of like the way it changes as I go around here. I wonder if I can exaggerate that a little bit. I want to change the colors. I want the, the one facing towards me to be white. So change that to white. And then maybe we'll go with like, in honor of the Marsiness you just talked about, maybe red on one side and like, oh, this might be Christmassy. Green on the other. So if I was to look at it straight on, it's just going to look white if I come from this side. That red comes Ooh. in. Hmm. Maybe not green. That's I don't care for that. That's just not the right green. You could probably find an earthier green. That's true. You get, get deep like this. Is that better? Can you make the the ripples a little more ripply? Probably. A little more, Let's a little more pronounced. Ripple it up. Um, fall off. Is that what that is? Maybe. Hmm. Oy. More. More. Well, I can also change the seed. Let's play that a little bit. This is fun. I, I like this. This is kind of cool. Um, I like that. That's kind of neat. Number of extrusion points. I can bump that. And give myself more or fewer points. Oh yeah, so there's there's just one bump that way. Let's take let's just crank that ten. Yeah. Okay. And I can change the rib thickness. I don't want to change the rib thickness, so I, I kind of like that. All right, so I'm gonna grab that. That's kind of a cool detail. I'm gonna take that, a copy of it over here. And then, uh, same thing I did before, we'll make that uh, unique. And then, because I don't want it to look the same on both sides, and then I'll just bump the seed, which should give me, all the rest of the details should be the same, but it will change uh, the location of the bump so it's not uniform on both sides. 
That's sufficiently weird looking. I like it. So I wonder I wonder if I could do another one above the door, like try to maintain the size. I don't know if this is gonna work. Well, I'm gonna try it though. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start by placing it right on top of an existing rib, and then I'm gonna move it over one rib width, and then I'm gonna drop it down vertically to the top. And now I'm gonna shrink the height way down, see how small I can go. Whoops, didn't make it unique. Undo. Undo, undo. That is undo. a very that is a very dramatic undo. Why is it? I think is it undoing like uh, let's pull this back all the way up to where is this one? There it is. I can see it from here. Oh, thanks for finding it. <laughs> so if we grab this guy, he is at thirty one eighty one. So if I take this one back down to thirty one eighty one. Let's see. And I'm going to grab this guy right here, make it unique. And I could not, it would not let me uh, go that short. I did drag it all the way down and, which, I mean, I guess it's an accent wall. It's not a, uh, or a feature wall. So if I grab my height right all the way down, it's still quite a bit larger than that space. So I'm going to take it now though. Let's see. Let's lengthen it. Oh, nuts. Of course it's going the opposite direction. That's, that's how I work. All right, so slide this back over this way. Get that wall length a little smaller. Might need to go smaller than millimeters. Oy. All right. And then what I'll do to get that to line up, like I said, this is, I could do a couple things. Oh, wait, you know what I should do? I already made it unique, so let me change the seed again. So it doesn't match. Um, and then what I could do is I could do the same thing I did before. Let's come on here and draw another line that I can group. And then I can scale that and push it down to that height. That's cool. It's weird, but I, I like it. All right, there's the front of our deployable uh, kitchen unit. It's something. It's something. All right, I'm going to slide this over here just because just uh, we're going to do the bathroom next. Um, all right, so. Hey, what's mm -hmm. the file name? Oh, yeah. Have you saved this recently? I have. Okay. And have I'll save again. What's in, have you told everybody what's in your left hand yet? Maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. This right here is a working... 3D mouse. So <laughs> last week we had some issues with the drivers because I poked around and changed software immediately before live streaming, which I vowed once again to never do again for a while. At um, least on the day you're about to <laughs> broadcast. Yeah, that'll be the plan, I guess. So this is a 3D mouse. What a 3D mouse allows you to do is move 3D models in 3D space without using your other control device. So it does a couple things. One is as you practice, it lends itself to very smooth navigation experiences like this. So I can kind of spin around nice and slow. This is actually kind of a big deal if you ever present to uh, customers or clients, anything like that, because the normal view that SketchUp users get used to is using the, the wheel mouse right here, right? So what can happen, and I'm, I'm not trying to insult your SketchUp workflow, but what ends up happening is you develop a uh, jerky process of moving through a model. So you kind of jump in, jump out, and then you spin quickly like this. It's what you get used to, and it's fine. When your brain's connected to the hand that's doing it and you're expecting these moves, awesome. 
If you're not, if you want to see these nice, if somebody who's looking at it wants to, to enjoy moving through the model more, a slow movement like this can be much more enjoyable. So that's one thing it does. The other thing it does is it leaves this mouse free to go grab whatever command you want to use next or go drop down some UI. I can do that while I'm moving in 3D space. So it's a great tool. It's absolutely not required for SketchUp. You don't have to have it. Uh, it's one of those things where I suggest it to people who are already SketchUp users and want to get a little bit better. What, what can they do to make themselves an even better SketchUp user? Or if you're somebody who presents a lot to non-SketchUp users, to other just, just uh, you know, the regular people out there. They who have not seen the light. Um, I have no, no association with 3D connection whatsoever, but uh, it's, it's a great product and it's a, a good way to up your skills if you're a SketchUp user. Okay, um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to come in here. Oop, I didn't make these part of my group. So I'm gonna grab the three of these. I'm gonna command X to cut it. I'm gonna come into context and I'm going to paste in place to put those into the group. Inside the group, I'm gonna grab my ceiling and my front walls and I'm gonna put them on a tag called top and front, because I'm, you know, creative like that. Add this to that same thing. All right, so I can toggle that. Now I can, having those in their own tag means I can turn those on and off, and I can work inside without having to worry about uh, losing myself. All right. So let's let's uh, let's get in here. Let's put some cabinetry in here first. Oh, you know what we should do? We should use our. Uh, I'll import the uh, GE appliances from last week. We can pull those in and drop them in here also. So what I'm going to do? This first one, the first cabinet I have. You can see by default when I just downloaded it, it downloaded a corner. So I'm going to grab that corner and put it into the corner, of course. So when I grab the corner. This is cool. I think this is since 2020. Uh, when you flip around sideways like this, it becomes transparent. And what that lets you do, it makes it real easy to snap into the corner because I can actually see that snap point. In older versions, you butt it up against one thing and then slide it around. It was in one of the dot releases, so I think that... Oh, maybe it was. If you didn't, if you didn't upgrade it all during the year, you never saw it. Although it's in that 2021 now. Um, all right, so I'm seeing one of the problems with my tessellations is that they are poking in and preventing me from sliding this right up against here. So to do this right now, I'd have to come out to my furthest point on the wall and have my cabinet sit out like that. I don't care for that. So, much as I hate to do it, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make it flat. Um, which is okay, it's okay, it's not a big deal. So take my maximum lateral variation and drop it to zero. That got these two, the sidewalls. This one is the one we made unique. So I'll have to double click on that one and take that maximum lateral variation, AKA the sticky outiness, and bring that down to zero as well. All right, that's gonna allow me now, if I go ahead and exit the group, I come in here and I can slide this right back up against the corner and that should hit right on there. Okay, cool. Before I go any further, I want to take a look. I should save, which I have done. You should do that. Yep. <clears throat> I want to take a look at what I can do with this component. Like I said, it's showing me right now, it's showing me the corner, the bottom corner. That's just the one that it, it uh, downloaded by default, but I can, of course, change any of those right here. I was thinking we'll go through some of these options right now and see what we want to use first and then we can go in and, and fill it all in. All right, so of course the unit. I have a straight one, L-shaped corner and an angled corner. All right, so I'll start with the L-shaped. Corner unit type, open shelves or covered. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Let's see what open shelves looks like. All right, we'll stick with covered right now. Uh, Bench top finish. Oh, that, so that's my my countertop. Um, all right, this. Is, so what I have with this wood's not looking like it doesn't jive well with my my container. My so I'm gonna go with something like 
dark granite. That's closer. What does light granite look like? Okay, that's all right. I like that. All right, then we have bench edge style. Ooh, this is cool. Square, filleted, tapered. Oh, I've never seen that before. That's cool. And then chamfered. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Yes, yeah, smart. That, smart that feels like choice. it goes. It goes. It goes with the look. I think so. I'm gonna go with that. Cabinet finish, <gasps> white ice. That sounds nice. I want to see what that looks like. That's 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 white. It's white. All right. <laughs> Round bar, ergo bar, ooh, square bar. I feel like the square bar is going to go with this because I got these these bars everywhere on here. Cut out or concealed. I want to see what concealed. Where where to go? Oh, it's concealed. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go with square bars. I think that's that works. That work good. Yeah, no, I like that. It's good. If it's kind of with the angular tessellated yeah. uh or triangulated. It's kind of what I'm feeling. Just feeling like um a breakfast bar. I'm assuming this is gonna make it hang out. So if we do an island or something like that, we could stick that. That doesn't make sense for this, obviously. Um all right, backsplash. Do we want a backsplash on it? Whoa! Where'd that come from? It's like it was shorter and now it's taller. That's so crazy. Ooh, colored glass. I guess that would make a little bit of sense because I'm going to have this empty space back here. <laughs> I probably don't want to lose things down. Uh, but it does look I'll, a little weird. I'll so the back of it. I'm going to turn it off right now. Maybe we'll come back and add backsplash. We'll see. All right. Now, I got this. So I'm going to I'm gonna grab... Oh, show advanced options. Hold up. Wait. Those but wait, there's more. Oh, I could also change the size of my carcass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing a change happening. Did you slide it? I didn't because I was afraid. I didn't want to. Oh, um, that's fair. I cut out sugar because I'm trying to shrink my carcass a little bit, and I don't really want to just slide it up. Like give a live component that kind of control over my carcass. Yeah. Um, it needs, to, needs to mind its p's and q's. That's right. All right, so I know I can get back to 900. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Okay, let's stick with 900, though. Um, so my advanced options is my carcass color. Oh, I can change the bench overhang. A little bit bigger. Oh, the thickness. All right, so yeah, it's got some, some fine-tuning we can do down here. I see why they stuck this under here. Panel thickness. This is the material height, really. Um, I'm going to stick with the default for right now. All right, so now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to option copy it over, right click and make unique. What I don't know is when I change this from a corner to a uh, standard inline, I don't know what direction it's going to go. If it's going to shoot up this way or that way. So I'm just going to do one here and then that one I will take and I'll copy, we'll copy and make it in uh, multiple pieces. So if I make this straight, you know, I had a 50-50% chance, and I was 100% sure I would get that 50-50% chance wrong. That's what I did. Well, you're, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. That's right. Or something like that. I was 100% right in being wrong. I'll take what I can get. All right. So I'm gonna... You know, shoot for big numbers. That's right. All right. Cool. And then I'll take that one. I'll grab it by this corner. Option copy it right here, rotate, flip that like that. All right, so that's kind of how my, I want to build this out once I get my, once I pull my uh, things, appliances in. Uh, we'll figure out where they go. Let's put some, let's put some upper cabinets in real quick. So I'll grab this guy right here. I'm going to grab him by the corner also. All right, question. Question for uh, maybe somebody who that seems that seems a little tall. That's going to be hard to get to. We're going to drop that a little bit. What is the average uh, cabinet height? I honestly, how mm -hmm. high above would you put a cabinet? The space between the countertop and the bottom of the cabinet. Yeah, That's who's got that? Who's got those numbers? Yeah, I, I would expect you to just rattle it off the top of your head. 
I will admit that uh, that is not a thing I know. I, I, I mean, when it comes to some 60 centimeters, I like it. Yeah, internet is 18 inches. 18 inches is the American version. <laughs> That's your 16 to 18, 30, 50. Oh, man, you guys got me so many numbers now. All right. I can't handle those numbers. I'm just going to go back to uh, making this match what's below. <laughs> All right. We went with white ice. We went with square bars, stainless. I got some more carcass options. Uh, and they got some panel thicknesses. Okay. Oh, we do want to, this, this should be, you know, since I got it, I got it all made up. I'm just going to go ahead and slide it over here a bit. Shift. And then I'll take that one. Sorry, I'll move it to the right height in just one second. And I'm going to make this unique. And then I'll make that one into a corner All right, straight l-shaped corner and then we're saying 18 inches is that what i heard 18 inches, 18 inches is what i said yeah and inches is 45 centimeters 457 millimeters so it's somewhere between 30 and 50. that's not carved in stone right that feels a little bit somebody went and actually who said that who's uh andy went and actually measured you want me to do that too just, just to just to see how americans are different than uh than the uk wait let's see right, where you, where's andy at he's in halifax i'll be right back Okay, so that's that's about the same. All right, okay. What we can do is we can make our uh, make the whole carcass. <laughs> I get what's being. I get I get the sentiment behind the term carcass, but I, I just think of 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 a corpse. <sighs> okay, we can grab this and we can actually make it taller. So it's six hundred millimeters right now. We could make that a little bit bigger. So maybe we'll go. Take advantage of some of that vertical height. Mine is 18 and one quarter inch. All right, so we're we're at 18 inches, so I guess that's that's where we'll keep it. All right, we did. I did decide to uh, lengthen my carcass, Jody. So whenever you say carcass, what I actually think of is the board game a carcassonne, which is probably just French for carcass or something. Is there a lot of cabinets in that? Uh, there's actually not any at all. So but there are sometimes dead bodies, maybe. Maybe. Aren't they made of wood, though? So it's not too big a deal? Yeah, and I think the only reason that I don't completely think of carcass as a body is because also whenever you go to buy woodworking tools, they have the carcass saw or whenever you're building Ew. a cabinet. Like on maybe. Dexter? Like on what? Dexter? Exactly. Exactly right. Dead body again. He's using a carcass saw. Scary. All right. Um, I'll throw one of these over you here. Talk about the fact that they're supposedly going to start a new season of Dexter or something. I heard that. I wonder if the, it's the baby this time. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay. So those are the pieces I'm going to want to use for right now. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, import and we call them GE hmm I wonder if I deleted it that would be bad and embarrassing because it'd be another mistake here today well this would be a mistake i didn't make during the live stream this would be something i did elsewhere so uh, it's still a mistake let's be clear but it's not today's mistake so you apparently this will be your first mistake period yeah i guess so um since it happened before today when i had my first on-air mistake ever 
You know, I did, I did, I believe I uploaded it for somebody else to use for some imagery. So, oh, no, I know where it is. Hold up, hold up, hold up. This is the problem with spur of the moment ideas is you got to think of how to use them on the spur of the moment. All right, let's try this again. File, import, and SU files. There they are. Oh, that's, that's just the dishwasher though. Oh boy. Well, there goes that idea. You know, right out the window. Hits. Hey, this is this is reality. This is what happens. This is the It's a bummer. I'm uh, sorry. I feel I feel bad for you right now. Oh no, here it is. I found it. It's called appliances. I feel better for you now. Who Oh. It's called I I trickily named it appliances so I wouldn't find it later, I guess. Typical. <sighs> Typical. All right, here we go. And remember, we put we put Steve in there. All right. That's right. I should come by, Steve. Bye, Steve. All right. Let's yeah get this slap this range in here. Oh man. All right. So I'm gonna pull that right up against the edge. Slide that right over. Nice. All right, so if that's going to be there, then that means I could pull some more cabinets over like this. Nice. I like it. Like it. Uh, let's see. This guy right here. I don't know where this hood's going to vent, but we got it, so we might as well put it in here. Let's align that with the center of there, and then we'll pull that straight back to there. And I'll come into this, and uh, I'll just pull it up to the roof. I don't know where it goes from there, but uh, space when or we pull it, or... when we yeah, see it, it looks like a thing. Um, yeah, that's a that's a that's a thing. You can cut holes in glass; it's fine. I've, I've heard, I have heard. All right, and let's grab this guy. And I'm going to bring him over here a little ways. And then I'll pull him straight back. I, Since I don't have a nice flat wall to snap to, I'm, I'm using my axes to, to move around. Um, just to kind of keep that simpler. If I maybe I'll take one of these now. Put it like that. And then we could slide this over here like that. That's too close. Give me some space, Ridge. Give me some space. Okay. I bet we could fit one of these. Right in between them. Right here. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Let's look like kitchen. Uh, over here. Here's probably rotate this fella. And slide him back. Against the wall there. Oh, I made my I made my top just a little too big. Remember I made that <laughs> made that thicker? And apparently there's a reason 40 millimeters is the default on that. And uh, may have just found about why. There you go. Well so but the counter talk usually goes over the top of your dishwasher right but i'm saying my my it's going to be a little bit too big oh i see right i didn't there. see that i didn't see the little chunky there that's okay i i have supreme authoring abilities over this so here's what i'm going to do for this one i'm going to grab this piece right here i'm going to option copy it right here and make it unique then i'm going to take this piece and i'm going to uh Detach definition. This is now no longer a live component. It's just a regular component. So I can come in it's here now. Component. That's right. That's what you're saying? It's a carcass of a component. 
So really, the only piece I want to maintain is this. I want to get rid of everything else on this component. Delete. And then grab this piece. And how deep are we with this? There we go. Nope. Slide that back like that. And there we go. Now we'll take this guy right here. Oh, and the other thing I do is I group these two together. So if I want to move them or rearrange them, that'll be easier to do. Which I think I want to, because if I'm going to put a sink somewhere, right here probably makes the most sense. I don't know. I'm not a kitchen designer. I admit that. Let's see. There's some. Let's see if there's internet's any internet opinions here. Nothing yet. You want it there, right? Because that makes the dishwasher closer to the cabinetry where you're most likely to put dishes and stuff. All right. I'm going to put this here. Say 3x. And I'll take these two, make them unique, edit one of them. and shrink my carcass size, raise that up like that. So I have a nice view out the kitchen window, which also happens to be the everything. Now let's see, let's go this like to here, take this one, make it unique, and then I can make that a little bit bigger, and then in theory, plop a kitchen sink right in there. Um, here we go. Man, it never seems to fail. Like, like I said, 50-50% chance what direction is going to grow. Apparently, maybe, maybe there's a rule there. Maybe it is it always grows to the right. I don't know. Well, so that's sort of a, a standard thing where your, your zero, your origin is usually the bottom left, right? That makes sense. Or the front makes left? Lot. Makes a lot of sense. Now you're talking logic. I was just venting. Okay, right. sorry. My bad. That's okay. It, it, it happens. Okay, cool. So we made a kitchen. Oh, I want to make an island real quick, though. Um, all right, so I'm going to take this one, pull it out this way. Something like, that seems a little, ah, that's all right. All right, I want to double that up. Two of them like that, yep. Make those unique. When you make unique and you have multiple things selected, then those two become unique together, which I know seems like an oxymoron, but uh, I was searching for a joke about the word moron there and it didn't come. Sorry. That's good. I, uh, I didn't have that... anything queued up. <laughs> Sorry. Next time I'll let you know when we got we got more on jokes hanging in the wind. All right, breakfast okay. bar. Turn it on. And then I guess that's it. Not an option for for that. You just it's it's on or off. All right. So there is my uh mobile kitchen. I got a lot of space here. I got a lot of a lot of walking around room. Well, so could it, could it also be like an attached dining room? Is that you go over there to eat or do you have to That's carry true. it outside? We could we could eat in the kitchen. I wonder, I want to see if I can do something here because this is a thing I do. I want to make this unique. I wonder if I can make a pantry height uh, cabinet. If I was to take this guy. What is the biggest I could go? All right, that's not impressive. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get in there, get my hands dirty, and do some editing here. Um, well, I guess I could do this. No. If I look at my options here, bench overhang, panel thickness, skirt. Can I get rid of the skirt altogether? Nope. I 
wonder if I can put two on top of each other and make that happen, but um, all right, let's slide this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make this into some sort of a cabinet, whether it, look, whether it looks good or not. Wait, no, that's not right. That's not right. So the nice thing is in the, uh, in the court of public opinion, I like to just say that phrase, it could look good or bad. There's somebody out there that that's thinks true. it looks bad and somebody that thinks it looks uh, good. That is true. That is true. All right. Schrodinger's uh, kitchen. <laughs> It looks good until someone opens the box and sees that it's dead or Ooh. something. So my kitchen is dead and alive right now? Exactly. Well, the stuff inside the cabinets. All right. So if I come into this one, oh, I got a detached definition, and then I can come in here and get rid of this. Ooh, that, that leaves something to be desired. So probably want to slap that on there like that. And then maybe drop this guy down like that. Probably I would end up changing those handles too because that's not probably going to work real well. Actually, I wonder if, I'm assuming these are grouped. Oh, yeah, there you go. So I could... At this point, make this one unique. Oh no, you know what I could do? I could just take it. No, this will be easier. I think I could flip it, but that would be, it'd be weird. So if I make this unique. Weird. Those handles up there, those bad idea for sure. Yeah, so we'll drop those. Okay, it's unique, but it's also sitting inside of a glass pod, so unique is okay. A lot, lot of light, a lot of light coming in on this one, I, I tell you. All right, so if I go, let's actually look at some light. I wanna, I wanna turn on my shadows just for fun and just see how this. You talked to anybody, didn't they say if the, the whole millimeter, using millimeters in the configurator, is that, is that going to be changed so that it honors what's in the model or is it always going to be millimeters? Um, I have heard that you'll have control over that at some point in the future. Okay. Did you I don't know if that'll be a warehouse be setting or what, but I'm sorry. You didn't, you didn't say at the beginning that this was a labs thing and labs means it's sort of like You're a, right. a, a public beta sort of where we're making this better based on feedback. That's right. Yeah, SketchUp Labs has brought us live components, which is uh, kind of like, well, it's like any other labs, right? Google Labs or Will Scott's Labs. Um, the Humane Society. Because <laughs> Labrador dogs. Okay. Uh, I thought you were talking about experimenting on dogs for a second there and thought that was in poor taste. <laughs> well, that, I mean, that's possible too, but I don't want to go there. It's a little too dark. I agree. Okay, uh, I'm going to slap... This up here. Because I forgot about this. Oh, you know what? That was this uh this pennant kind of matches our outside, if I could change the colors. Um, but I don't know, let's see, let's see what our options are for whoops. For modifying this live component. <clears throat> pendant light so let's see parametric wave versus teardrop okay Ooh. empire kind of and cylinder I guess all of these feel sort of 60s to me now they do I think pendant lights in general I guess I'm I, I guess I'm leaning towards this one because it seems to match our facade wall the yes. most um, I want to take this down. See, yeah, see, I want to just do one light right over the middle of the island. <clears throat> I think we can drop this. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like it. I like this. This is fun. Color. 
We only do one color, so in that I would probably <gasps> this will be our accent piece. We'll just make this bright red. It's the one Ooh. thing that stands out. Ooh, number of waves. Ooh. That's starting to look like a Spider-Man logo. I'd say when it moves like that, it's kind of. Or it's, what's his name? Who's that villain? His looks like a helmet of that one Galactus. I'll just say it's. it's I think you get over here, and it's the Sauron. Okay, I can see that too. This is kind of soothing. I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna ASMR this thing. Just go ahead and somebody grab this and, and loop it. Do a boomerang. Okay, that's enough. I'm feeling calm now, though. All right, I, I think I like it just like the basic one we had. I don't know. What's covered look like? Oh, come on. No. Oh. That's, that's, that's. That might look neat with some of the other shapes, though. That's true. I'm going to go with a few fewer of these, two. Oh, yeah. See, that's... Come out here. Look at that. That's, that's key right there. I, I like it. All right, so I'm going to take that. I want to get it over... Uh, this guy right here. So I'm going to hit move. And let's see. I'm going to grab it by... Um, what was the top end number of lights? I didn't see that. I was looking at the at the text. How many how many lights could possibly be dangling? Up to three? Um, yes, it was one to three. There we go. Look at that. I have, have it line up there with the middle, and then we'll go this way. I am realizing this will be hanging off of glass, but we're in the sci-fi world. This is, uh, or something, I don't know. That's kind of cool. It's unique. It's it's not a thing we have modeled before. <laughs> we, we've done some kitchen and bathroom stuff in the past, but I could say we've never done anything like this. So that's kind of cool. I mean, considering we did that in like 50 minutes, 40 minutes, I think that's kind of neat. All things, all things relative, right? Keep it in perspective. I think it's dope. I also, now I want all the handles to be red. Ooh, I wonder if, yeah, I think we can do that. Hold up. I think I can do that for you, Jody. Let's see. All right, so I'm going to come into this one. Because I had it as stainless, but I bet we could do paint. Let's see. Handle finish. No. Brass, black, or stainless steel. Fine. Sorry. Maybe in Mobile Maybe. Kitchen 2.0. Maybe we'll come back and there'll be an option someday. All right, um, that's fair. Yeah. All right. So now let's 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 do a mobile bathroom, because <laughs> because that was a little little uh, not not weird enough. All right, uh, so we're gonna make our tessellated pod into our mobile bathroom or deployable bathroom unit. That's really that doesn't that just doesn't doesn't sound as compelling as deployable kitchen. It doesn't. It sounds like you're trying to be fancy and say outhouse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or porta potty. Yeah. Either way, not 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 fancy and not technical. All right. Uh, let's look here. Uh, so my options. I have a finish, flat plywood, felt, canvas, or flat. Ooh. I'm going to see what canvas is like. So Andy wondered, what would happen if we actually edited the component and colored the handles red? Would that, would that break it at that point because of the... So, so yeah, let's, let's talk. Let's, let's look. Here, I'll be back. I'll be back, Pod. So in order to color it, so at this point, again, because it's a SketchUp thing, I can make any changes I want to it. It, it being a live component is where it starts from. It does not mean that's where it has to finish. Uh, in order to make those kind of changes, though, I do have to come in and cut, sever the tie to the live component data. So when I'm ready to do that, I could come in here and grab all of these. I'm just going to do it. This is what you've asked for, whether you asked for it or not. I'm going to grab all of my bottom. 
and I can detach definition. So now they're still components, they're just not live components anymore. So if I was to come grab this one, which repeats, this guy's, I gotta turn off my uh, my top and front so I can work in here. This guy gets repeated one, two, three times. So if I was to grab this right now, come in here, come in here, come in here, B, grab my, actually let's, let's, let's pull from right here. Oh, I'm out of. Grab that same red. All right, so if I grab everything, when I color that now, it colors just like a normal component, all of the instances that are the same. The ones that I've made unique, whether I made them unique and then edited them as live component or I made them unique and severed the tie, did not get colored. So that means I just have to come in here to this one, for example. Grab this guy over here. Over here. And because I made this unique in order to slide those handles down, I have to do this one separately. But I could go through and do that. Let me do this. Let me let me change this real quick. Go to my styles and get rid of my profiles because you'll see those handles a little better. Oh, you know what? I got these two also. Because these are copies of the same one, I should only have to do this once. So power components still exists. Uh, yeah. And the top should be even easier because I have one, two, three, one, four, three, I think. So let me grab all these. Detach. That one, short ones. And then the corner. And that should give us all red handles. Yeah, so not, not difficult. Um, but of course the issue is now it's not a live component. So I can't, I can't come back in here and modify those uh, component values at this point. Um, which, I mean, if the, if the intent behind using a live component is the generation of that initial data, the initial geometry that you're hoping for, that's that kind of that falls right in line with what I how I would expect that to work. So, all right, there we go. The kitchen is done right. again. Good question, thank you, Andy. All right, let's get back to the pod, the pot, the the potty pod. I'm sorry. Um, all right, we're just gonna, we're we're gonna just keep talking. We're gonna ignore it. I'm pretend that didn't happen. Okay, so we're looking at materials. Felt seems like a bad material to use in something that's a bathroom. So maybe we'll, we'll go past canvas or felt. A flat material. Oh, flat, so flat's just saying just straight color. Okay. See, I, th I thought that was going to mean that canvas might have a little bit of a, a fabric. It has a little texture to it. to it, but it's not. Oh, yeah, there's, there's definitely a canvas texture, whereas felt is... A little streaky texture. Right, I, I don't know. You. I, I mean, I just think you you want a hard sided material that you can disinfect and spray down if it's a bathroom. That's my personal opinion. Um, <laughs> we can change the colors of the rods and the hubs. Um, so I'm looking at the little gap between each of the panels and the rods. Yeah. I'm thinking that that is not a bathroom I want to use. Probably not. A little bit too much airflow there. So uh, panel to edge, we can shrink that down to almost nothing. And then, oh, nope. So we can blow some of this stuff up so it fills up most of the space, but we're still going to have a little bit of a gap there. 
So you're going to have to be adventurous if you use this bathroom. Um, yeah, I don't have any specific... Uh, well, I guess we'll go with white just to have it match the look of the existing geometry. Okay. I really don't Sorry. like those big hubs, though. That's It's bothering me. Like frisbees stuck to the side of my thing. Okay, that's better. Sorry, what was that? Uh, I thought you had said the hubs you couldn't change color on, but I can see obviously that's wrong. So it's the rods. The colors you can change everything. Did I say couldn't change color somewhere? Probably. I probably said that. I thought, I I thought that's what you said before. Maybe you were saying something else about them. Could the be. Rods and hubs. Oh. Um, and like, variation. This is the other thing. So I don't know what this does. Ooh. Okay. So how irregular do we want our pod? Oh, interesting. So it doesn't have to be just your standard geodesic dome. No, we can get straight up kooky with it. Ah, looks like it hurts. Turn that let's see, let's, let's crank the period. That's kind of neat. I like it. It's uh, so if I go to no variation, that's when I have just, they're not, they're not all the same. Actually, the, so this back half looks like they're the same, but then at the entryway, I definitely have distortion to maintain this uh, kind of a flat. It's not even flat. It's, it's kind of a flat opening. As I say, I want more variation though. Still looks like these are the same size. Tri no, they're not. Look at that. That's a, that triangle is different shape than this. Well, maybe. Well, that's kind of cool. That's that's neat to know that I can make that change. You can't. There's not an option for changing the size of the whole thing, though. So uh, we're going to get creative with the uh, how we how we fill this geometry with our <laughs> with our gear over here. All right. Um, all right. So let's look what's going in here. <laughs> I don't have a dynamic an LC com toilet, though. I've noticed. Um, all right, let's, let's do the same thing we did to our cabinets over here and let's, let's get, uh, our, our bathroom. So it works in the aesthetic we have created. So if I double click on this, let's see what our options are for this first, uh, vanity. Um, all right. So obviously I have some, I have size options. I can, Make this bigger or smaller. Uh, make it deeper. Change the countertop height. Here's what I'm looking for, though. Let's go with that same light granite. That's what we put in the bathroom. Um, I'm feeling like we want to stay away from wood. So maybe I'll just stick with white everywhere to kind of match what we had in the other room. Um, I like the wood because then it feels like you're going to the bathroom in nature. Well, that's true. We could we could change it up so it doesn't go with this. That's always an option. Um, floor mounted or wall hung. We don't really have walls, so let's stick with floor mounted. Uh, and we have some options here. Oh, that's cool. So I can break up how many divisions there are. And I can do single cabinet, drawers, or shelves. I like that. That is really neat. I got some options for my basin. Where do I want to put my basin? Center, left, or right. My bowl. Yeah, we could go with something that matches. We used all square stuff over in the other one, so let's go with more. Oh, trapezoid. That could look good with our geometry over here. And then tap style. Hey, square, right? Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. Oh, yeah. That is really cool. Oh, and then we can turn on a mirror. That just oh, throws it. It didn't actually reflect. Psh. Oh, sorry to let you down, buddy. Yeah. Rectangular or circular. Can we change the height? We can. Cool. All right. So I'm going to grab. Actually, no, here's what I, I want to do. I, this, I, 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 okay. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. Okay. So. 
I'm thinking, here's what I think I want to try. I want to try to have, I want to put an option into this kitchen or into this bathroom. So uh, I mess with the width of this one. So I want to make sure I have the exact same width for this one. Um, so my, my width ended up being, let's make it a nice round 1200. Okay, so now I'll take this one and same thing. We'll bring it up. I want to match the, the option here because what I was thinking is it'd be cool to switch between a dropped and uh, a top mount and dropped sink. So we'll go to 1200, same thing. Match a lot as much of this as I can. So we'll put the light granite on top. We'll make it painted and painted. Uh, floor mount still, advanced options, we'll go up to three, we'll do the same thing, we'll match it. So single cover, drawer, and then shelves, matches there. Uh, basin styled, we have like a trapezoid, we do a trapezoidal dropped. So again, that kind of fits with our angular aesthetic we got going on. Go to a square tap and turn on a mirror. All right now, if I, what I should be able to do now, I changed my mirror height somehow. Okay, I should I should probably start paying more attention to what it is I'm actually doing. Let's go ahead and say the 600. So we'll put a square mirror on there. We'll do the same thing here, and I will put this at also 600. And then we're going to make them into options. So, so I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it on a tag called drop sync. And I'm going to put another tag in here called Raid sync. I don't know the proper terminology. I apologize. And then <laughs> I'm going to entity info. This one right here, of course, will go on drop. This one right here will go on raised. I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to put them inside of a uh, no, call it the vanity sync tag. And then I'm going to take them and put them right over each other, right on top of each other, and then uh, select both of them and group them together. Now what I can do is I can, just by clicking these, toggle between how I want that sync to look. Everything else is the same at this point. There's not a way to link it together, so this is a manual process. I jum jumbled them together. But now I can actually just real quickly say, do I want that raised or dropped sync? And I can just look at it like that. I can move it as one piece because I did group them together. So if I bring it in here, um, hmm. yeah, working inside this space is going to be rough. Uh, something like that. Imagine if you were the actual contractor trying to get in there and do all the work. I probably have some creative names for the designer. Yeah, but that works. Look at that. Look at that. It's, it's a it's a thing of thing. To something. Right, let's slide it back a little more, maybe. I think I just put, nope, I didn't pop out yet. That's good. All right, so there's the sink. <laughs> and uh, let's check out the, our last piece, the piece we haven't used yet. This is this is kind of cool. This is we, we've got through a lot of stuff here. All right, so this this guy right here, the what is it called, hydro rail? Yeah. You know what? Actually, when I saw the name, what came into my head, I don't know if you guys are Simpsons fans, but you remember the monorail song? Monorail, monorail, monorail. That's what was, was going through my head when I saw this, this piece of plumbing. I'm not familiar. Now I feel like I should... Would you, it's called The Simpsons? Is it on television? It's a television show. It's, uh, it's, it was fairly brief. It's only been on for 36 seasons or something like that. <laughs> It actually started out in black and white. That's right. <laughs> it's on the Ed Sullivan show. Um, 
All right, let's let's look at what we got here for this guy. I don't know what any of these presets are, so this is gonna be fun. Uh, we can go an H S or an R arch or an R beam. Oh, whoa! I lost my second head. Yeah. Okay. That was bad, man. Ah, I see. So those are my my shower head options. That seems to make the most sense. Um, shower or bath. Oh, so it just drops it down lower. So we'll stick with a shower. We're going to put a little basin or something in here. Uh, rain head. Tr oh. Okay, so this is the trim around the rain head. Let's see what that does. Oh, that's cool. And wasn't that like a not that like a children's rhyme? Catalyst tradition. Trim around the rain head. Oh. Well, I I I like the biggest one we can get. So I'm going to go with the 10 inch. Uh, Wow. I'm assuming that all of these things are like standard Kohler options. So if you're if you are a Kohler fan, I apologize for not being up on my Kohler stuff, but that that matches that better. So I'm gonna stick with that. Uh, right temp trim valve. Let's see what Purist looks like. Yeah, that seems to fit better with what we're doing. Polished chrome. Yep. Hose length 72 or 60. Well, I'll just have to go with the 72 again. Just try to go big as possible, right? Um, shower, hand shower angle. Oh, that's cool. Let me tell you why I like that so much. Let's hear it. Look, as I, as I change that, look at what happens to the hose. It's pretty, it's pretty slick, man. So that 3D, well, I, I got to geek out for a second. Um, I turn on my hidden geometry. So look at all those, look at all that geometry that goes in there to that hose. And as I change this, it's actually going to recalc all that geometry. That's pretty neat. Very cool. Let's see what else we got here. Hand shower position. Ah, oh, same thing. So as that piece slides up and down this bar, it's actually going through and recalcing the loop. So this geometry is actually getting recreated as I slide that. That is so cool. And then uh, what's this? Oh, it's rotating the. Okay, that's cool too. It doesn't recalculate that uh, this part, but uh, still cool. Okay, that's that's nice. All right, I like it. Um, that's neat. That is a neat component. There's some fun stuff in there. All right, let's uh, let's make a quick just shower wall, I guess, to put this thing on. So I'm going to build it from here. I'm going to put uh, a starter rectangle in the middle of this circle right here. Uh, so this is something to note. It doesn't look like this is actually being picked up as a circle by SketchUp. I don't know if it's because it's in the live component. I don't know if that's because that geometry is parametrically generated but I don't have a circle to jump to the center of. Um, so not a, not a big deal, but something to note. So I'm just gonna come off the top and the side and then create a rectangle. Where is my, where's my ground? All right, I'm just gonna create a All right, that's 10 feet tall, so that's probably a little too big to fit anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that up to wherever the bottom of the cabinet is. Just put it right in the middle. <laughs> Shower pod. Priorities. All right. Go like, you know, like that. Give this a little bit, a little bit of depth. Maybe something like this. Bring that out, offset that geometry, push it down, grab that, scale it about the middle, and then we'll shift that back this way. That feels a little... Yeah. That'll work as a shower thing. Question is, 
can I fit it <laughs> in the pod? Will it will it fit? Got a hard no on that one. All right, yeah. let's. Fortunately, we can be a little bit flexible with this. Just got to get it to a spot that uh, it's going to work with our other fixtures. Now, what if I what if I lined it up kind of with the corner here? Rotated it out something like that. And now we can shift some geometry around to make that work out. So if I grab it like this, I can grab this geometry right here, which is the front walls. Oop, gotta go in context. I can slide that back a little bit. Okay. I could grab all of this. Pull that in so it fits inside the building, which is a plus for a shower. Pull that up here. All right, and that, so whoops, got we got an issue. That seems a little high anyhow, doesn't it? So it should come down. All right, and then I'll come back in here. Bring that down so it fits inside. All right, <laughs> we got a shower. I could probably take all of this too, and uh, maybe that to be quite so large. And then... I mean, this isn't a criticism, but I will say that you are definitely having to take some creative license to tie all of these pieces <laughs> together. It's, hey, you, you're telling me that if you are, you, you're working in this professional grade kitchen on the surface of a potentially hazardous planet somewhere making some nice meals for some space marines or something and you wouldn't at the end of your day like to walk out this oversized slider and maybe pop into the old uh potty pod and freshen up in the shower i mean oh, maybe you're saying it's you're saying that because i didn't put a drain in i got gotcha. you exactly oh my gosh i didn't i didn't want to have to say it out loud sorry yeah. i feel silly sorry i took offense so since this is on another planet, uh, we definitely have to find a way to seal those cracks. Because otherwise, you know, atmosphere. Ah, that sounds like the installer's problem. I'm a designer. Nice, nice. Yeah. Sounds sounds rational. <laughs> sounds good, jerk. Oops. I slid that the wrong way. Take that. All right. That will represent our drain. And it just goes out into the Martian soil. Um, save. All right, that's kind of cool. That's, that's, I mean, oh, and, and what? You don't like drop sinks? Did I hear that? Oh, no problem. We can do that right now. What? That's the kind of service we offer here at Deployable Pods, etc. cetera. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, let's, Let's, I want to look at something else. I can't remember if, <gasps> we do, we have a live component toilet. You're going in the pod, buddy. Do we, will we call this the potty? That's spelled P-O-D-D-Y, huh? Nice, huh? I like it. All right, we'll put that right there in the so corner. I saw some recent, like, little known facts about, or things that just show how weird Japan is, is apparently the toilets in a lot of their public restrooms. Public, I guess. The ba the back of the toilet turns into, is a sink. They it's all one unit. I will say that J Japan design in general is good because they have more limited space. So they take advantage and they put things together that we get, you know, weird about. They roll with it, and that's, I mean, yeah, why not? There's already water there. It's already plumbed, right? Yeah. You just got to run a hot tap to it, and, and yeah, the drain's there. It all works. I mean, when you're designing a house, you put your bathrooms on different floors above each other to keep your plumbing all in one spot. Why not move it all even closer together? That's right. All right, so we got some options here for, whoa, that was fun. Interesting. Like a transformer. Oh, that is cool. Okay, so I took the rounding off because the square matched better. But uh, as I started, so the cistern is attached. As I bring it up a little bit, a pipe shows up. 
and the handle goes on the side. As I keep sliding it up, there I get a little wall bracket, but the higher I go, this is cool, watch this, a chain drops down. <laughs> I love that. That is so cool. So if you have cistern fear, you could put that thing up near the ceiling. I'll be honest, my fear of cistern would be largely dependent on how high it was. And if it was up near the ceiling, I would be very afraid of it. I'm with you on that. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna square this up. Oh and look. Oh male design, female designed. Nice. Way to get way to way to make the show a little bit sexist. That's right. Boom. I apologize. <laughs> that was a that was a shot at guys, so I'm allowed to do that. Because oh, okay. guys don't leave the toilet seat down like they're supposed to. That is cool. That's a cool toilet. That is a fun toilet to play with. Probably something I'll never say again. <laughs> something, something I never thought I would hear you say, and yet here you here you said it. Here I is. I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna put a ground a floor on this thing. Let's. I'm just gonna arbitrarily pick a center point. I'm just gonna throw a line across like this. Put a circle on the ground plane. Because we got so far from being like normal. Uh, I don't actually have a center here, so it's not a clean center, but, uh, I mean, there is a center, but it's, yeah, there's a middle. Yeah. It's, it's abnormal center, but that'll work. I think that'll work. All right. So now I want to know if there's a, a Murphy bed live component. <laughs> you want to put the, you want to sleep in that bathroom? <laughs> oh, well, no, I want to sleep oh, in the kitchen. No, you know, what we need, I, I'm digging this live component game we got going on here <laughs> hold on i want to see what we have hold on. let's look um i was thinking is there a fun way to close up the front of that thing like with a door I mean, do i understand that that's what you're asking is there a door yeah, but it's a weird shape, and I was wondering if there's a better way to fill it, like a nice curtain. <laughs> or a start ornament. How big can you make your start ornament? <laughs> curtain. See how there you go. All right, so we'll bring this in here, and let's see what our <laughs> options are. It was, I'm assuming we can go from double to single. That would be the first thing I'd look at. Um, bunch. Oh, maybe not. So, does not look like we can, well, I, could, I think we can make a single one work though. So if we drop the height a little bit, oh, nope, wait, I got a delay. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Okay, like that, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with a, uh, let's go with our accent color, let's go with our current. We got red everywhere else. Okay, okay. Metal. Here, let's let's. Oh, the bunchiness. I get it. That's cool. Open it up like that. All right. I'm gonna unbunch a little bit because I'm gonna do some scaling to it. All right. And now I'm gonna take that. I'm not comfortable with them being red curtains because it makes me think of like, you know, Broadway, like a big show. And so they'll <laughs> they'll pull apart and you get to watch the show behind the big curtain. Ta-da! Yeah, I, <laughs> ah! I can see that. I'm just really wondering where I can even stick them though. This this plan might this plan may fail. I'll just be straight. This might not work. Oh, you know what? They seem to be kind of flowing this way, so I'm gonna spin them 180 degrees. So they Oh man, disappointed. I was hoping when you spun it that they would sort of quaffed out with the uh, the inertia of the spin. All right. Scale these a little bit this way, a little bit this way. I'm still not sold on this plan, by the way, me. 
just got to tell myself that. It's fine. We can still recover from this. It's not, we're not beyond recovery. We're beyond the point of no return. That's true. That's true. All right. We got to turn it a little bit back this way. Okay. Drop it down just a touch. Scoot it back just a touch. Oops, wrong one. Rectangle. And then just, I think, scale it up just ever so slightly. Ever so slightly enough that it doesn't poke out. Okay, and, and those could, at that point then, I could come in here. <laughs> and I could draw the curtains. Uh, oh that's fun privacy and when you're done you just draw the curtains, back. curtains i saw that the uh the muppets the muppet show which i watched as a child a lot is coming to uh disney plus i, I muppets now i think they call it no no there's like the old ones are coming oh Ooh, yeah i watched the new ones the the, the yeah. newest it's not really a reboot it's the same characters but they're all in the pandemic too which is kind of funny because they're oh, nice. they're muppets but yeah they're telecommuting all of it and it's it's uh, it's pretty fun all right I feel I like it I like I mean I agree the red curtains are maybe a little bit theatrical a little too dramatic but uh, but yeah if I come over here oh look at that see now I'm second guessing the green though but nah nah keep it there all right. All maybe right, there so should be a green liner on the curtains. Maybe I should just move the back. Oh, oh, hold, hold up. Command X. In context. Pace in place. All right. See, now that is one of those thumbnails for a live model that makes you go, what? I gotta, I gotta watch that. <laughs> You're smelly. You should go inside. Not on the glass, but actually inside. There we go. Awesome. Well, we did it. We, we used every single piece. That's something. So we got a potty pod over here. We can wash up. You can change your sink setup if you want. If you'd like that raised sink, you can do that. Can shower with the Kohler Hydro Rail. So whenever you've got a, a counter that's got a raised sink like that, do you make the counter lower so that you're not having to like reach up to get your hands into the sink to wash them? The ones I've seen are right on top. So I don't know. Maybe maybe yeah. bath designers out there can can give us a little more info on that. But uh, the ones I've seen are just like that. They sit up higher. So there's our our bathroom with our soundproof airtight drapes and then over here we got our tessellated wall and full kitchen with oh we never dropped the sink in here hmm I wonder if i can go steal a sink from over here did, did you ever put a sink in the kitchen no. Inquiring minds want to know. So specifically, Andy's inquiring mind wants to know. Yeah, I just, I just realized this. I, I, I'm on it. I'm stealing. I'm stealing from the bathroom. Um, I don't want to actually. So that means I, I'm going to copy this. Come out. Come in here. In context. Paste this. Yeah. So I'm going to steal this sink right here. So I'm going to detach my definition first. And then I'm thinking of how to easy do this most easy. I think if I grab these pieces, copy them, then I come over here. I can't get rid of this though. I paste it into this because I want to keep I want to keep the profile of my sink. I want to keep this. But no, you know, what? let me let me try this. Let me just temporarily hide this. 
and then I'll paste this sink in. The sink's going to be different size for everything though, so I'm going to have to edit right away. Um, so I'll start with this. Uh, coming over here. I think, so I'm getting, I, I'm having a hard time push pulling anything and I'm guessing, let's do a couple things. Let's get rid of everything else and then look at hidden geometry. Yeah, everything's triangulated. I think that has to do with how the geometry is generated by the engine. So, and this isn't gonna let me push pull here either because of this. So to modify this, I'm gonna have to use move rather than push pull. Not a big deal, but something to consider if you end up using a lot of live components, you might want to uh, get cleanup on your machine to get rid of this kind of stuff. Because cleanup will real quickly merge all those faces so I could push pull them. Um, I will stick with moving the faces, which will give me the same result there and then. I'm going to, oh, I just said I can't push pull. So I'll have to cut all this off manually. Not a big deal though. All right, there we go. One more line like that. There we go, we got our face back. Cool. And oh, I'll just delete the bottom side. I don't need it. Come out of here. And actually, I want to get these recentered. So this is going to cause an issue for just a second. Because come in here again, grab all this. So I actually got to slide these back too. I know this isn't a very good kitchen sink or a kitchen faucet, but I'm working with what I got. Oh, it's all we can ask. That's right. Well, you can always ask for more. I'll just turn it down. Touche. I made a mess. One moment. I made that mess all the way back here. All right, so let me try that again. Get this guy centered. Oops, not you. Just these guys. Centered. Slide them back a little bit. And then I can come in here, grab the hole, realign the hole with that point right there. Excellent. And now, what I might do, maybe I'll just go into hidden and just do a quick cleanup of these broken lines so I can push pull this back in one move. What do we got under here? More lines. Here's one here. So like I said, if you have cleanup installed, this is one click to just tell it to clean it all up, but I'm still mostly uh, extensionless at this point. There we go. Now I can pull that all the way across. Almost all the way across. Oop, there we go. I feel like if you're, if you're going to do extensions, you should do them not right before the next Wednesday. Exactly. And guess when I think about maybe doing an extension? Right before. <laughs> Lesson learned. All right, let's see my hidden objects. I like it, so I'm going to get rid of that original countertop, and there we go. I know it's it's not the it's not the perfect kitchen sink, but we're going for a look, form over function, or yeah, form over function. Cool. Yes. So that was the piece that was missing. But now, as I was saying before, we did that. Stand here, wash the dishes, and look out the window and see the potty pod. So maybe we should put that somewhere else. Well, at least you got the door turned the other way. That's true. Mostly. Ooh. 
There we go. Yeah, I guess we could take that and just one more pivot. Just privacy. There we go. <laughs> At least 10 meters between the bathroom and the kitchen. It's a code thing. Cool. Yeah. But there's not code in sp space. Well, this is only space, right? This could be sub-Saharan Africa. That's true. Well, obviously, it's, it's not someplace in a vacuum. Coded, coded. We, we did not. We did not account for that sort of thing. Awesome. Well, yeah. I mean, that's so. That's uh, the big thing is that's the ten new live components. Which, like I said, I, I did. I knew what they were going to be. I tried really not to play with them or dive too deep into them or make a plan for what I was going to use. But uh, after having used them, there's some cool options in there. I really, one thing I like, cabinets are such a pain. Um, I know these aren't comprehensive cab cabinets with every panel option, anything like that. But the ability to get them dropped in like that, that quick and easy, that was kind of cool. I like that. We didn't even dive in all the way to get, getting like the shelves and stuff that you can mess with. Um, the cool part too. Was there an option? Was there an option to open the doors? Um, I don't think you could open. I've exploded them all now, but uh, you could leave the doors off. So that was kind of cool, oh. and put shelves in there. Have the shelves show. Um, so I like that. And then again, the idea that once it dumps in, it's a component. So if you did want to change, you could change it all at once. That was kind of neat. Um, I thought the tessellation options for for the the wall the feature wall and the the pod were kind of fun to, to play with those that was neat um i'm trying to think if i had to pick a favorite of all the the new live components we played with i think it might be this feature wall i know it's kind of kind of weird but neat. it's so it would i was thinking like as you were doing it, it would also i mean you could just pivot and basically it becomes the top of a uh, gazebo or a what's the thing I'm trying to say now? Oh yeah, yeah, like uh, yeah, you could do that over over top. You could make it horizontal too. Doesn't have to just be a wall. No. Well, that's cool. Well, those extension or those uh, those live components are available right now in the warehouse. You can go look at them. You can play with them. You can adjust them there. Download them in your model. Adjust them there. If you got 2021. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah you got 2021. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on those. Go get them and play with them. And you can actually uh, respond right inside the, uh, I don't know if you shared the forum link we have, but uh, I would be interested to hear what your guys' favorite ex live component is of those new ones. Um, and I'd like to see them in models. If, if you guys actually use them in a model, make sure to share them with us. And because uh, I'd love to see how they get used in a real model. This was kind of a stretch of the imagination, kind of a fun thing to do, um, but really a neat way to explore those options. Oh, but you know what? I got to, I gotta, hold on, I got to back up. This pennant was really fun to play with too. So maybe that was my favorite. I don't know. I got multiple favorites. Um, but yeah, check them out. Try them out. And remember, there's another 70, 60 or 70 in addition to those newest 10, so... Like we just found out because that's where we got the toilet and uh, what else did we grab? Oh, the curtains. Our soundproof bathroom curtains. That's uh, right. Atmosphere proof too. That's right. They're airtight. So yeah, so check it out. Try them out and uh, let us know what you think. Um, so we're going to be back here next week. Uh, next week we're going to do a, a fun model. Now, this was fun too, but next week we're going to, you know, Model, model, not configurate model. Right. This was more taking things and putting them together. We're going to start from scratch. So next week, we're going to do a uh, cyberpunk-themed model. We're going to do the the protagonist's apartment, so V's apartment. We're going to model that for from some photos. I think we're going to do some like photo match. I haven't done a whole lot of photo match live, so I thought that might be kind of fun is get in there and, and do some photo match because it's not just straight corners. There's a lot of round corners and stuff like that, so uh, that'll be a fun one to do. So come back next week, next Wednesday, noon Mountain Time, and we will model uh, V's apartment from Cyberpunk. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you had a lot of fun. And uh, I think that's about it. So we will be seeing you later. See you next week. See you guys.